Blazing Saddles! Up yours! And one of the greatest moments in cinema history happens. Santa Maria! <laughs> As Mexicans, we relate machin with that. Yeah, that spoke to my soul. If you don't find farts funny, we can't be friends. I'm sorry. Mongo only pawn in game of life. That's the main reason why it can't be made today. Because... This show, we pluck a name out of our all time movie watch list, watch and review for even pleasure. The movie we're scratching off the list today is a 1974 classic, Blazing Saddles. In order to ruin a western town, a corrupt politician appoints a black sheriff who promptly becomes his most formidable adversary. So, you had not seen this uh, before? No. Spoiled it for me? I, yeah, I, I remember showing you my favorite part. I thought it was a racing movie. Like, uh, mm. like a old maybe roman time type movie yeah, or, yeah i see what you or, mean yeah so i was like oh and when you told me oh it's cowboys i was like what are you talking about yeah i remember having this as a dvd my dad trying to show it to me growing up <laughs> and failing miserably i would catch bits and pieces of it you know so like most of everything in the list and i say it every time i never actually sat down and watched the whole thing mm -hmm. but i also feel like as silly as Mel Brooks movies are, I don't feel they are for kids. They don't capture kids. Is that fair? 100% fair. If I would have watched it younger, I would never appreciate it. Well, because there's things you don't get. It's as silly as it is. I would never got the whole movie. The intro. Right. As childish as it is, there's jokes for adults. So I feel like Mel Brooks movies are for man children, which is what we are. Which is why now we love them. <laughs> you know, so true. <laughs> this is the second Mel Brooks we've done for the list, and I plan to do many, many more. Please. But I might be wrong on this. Let us know down in the comments your thought about that. But he's such a legend, and he's, he's so original as well. He's got his own style that it's impossible to replicate. Not today in age. Well, because it, it can't be done, which we'll get into a whole discussion of that later. But... There's a style to his stuff, like the timing and the jokes and everything, which is I also think why he used Gene Wilder in a lot of his movies as well, because they're like a perfect match because they're both have that man child thing. Yeah. Did you know Gene Wilder almost didn't do Wonka? I think I knew that. I mean, I did the list for Wonka, but I don't remember anything I say past the list that I'm doing currently in this moment. <laughs> He told the director that he, if, if the director did not let him do the walking stick scene. Oh, that's right. That was a make-or-break. He make was not going to do it. Yeah, that was a make-or-break. I do get it because Gene Wilder is very passionate about the things he's going to do. And it shows. But they ha my point is he has a similar sense of humor as Mel Brooks. And they both get each other. And it's easy. Oh, yes. They're a match made in heaven. Before we get into the movie, if you like these kind of movies where we break it down and recap it and all that and review it let us know down in the comments if you like this stuff what other movies you like us to add to the list any and all things no brooks and blazing saddles let us know down in the comments let's get into it bro uh i like the fire transition like at the beginning of the movie when it goes to wonder brothers to the title of the movie and i don't mean like fire as in cool as a like literal fire the burning of the wb looks really cool <laughs> <laughs> And he goes into a goofy song explaining the premise of the movie. They needed a man who was brave and true, with justice for all as his aim. Mel Brooks wanted someone who sounded like Frankie Lane. And then Frankie Lane was like, well, if you're trying to find someone who sounds like me to do the song, I'll just do the song, <laughs> you know? Oh, shit. <laughs> but he was never told that it was for a comedy. So that's why he's singing it so serious, because he thought oh. it was like legit. Good on the gaslighting there. <laughs> it just mel didn't have the heart to tell him i mean you're talking to a legend how the hell are you gonna tell him no i'm gonna use your song for a goof right so we got the real world with a bunch of chinos and another minorities i love it oh fuck <laughs> already from the beginning we get a main cowboy asshole come up and ask for a slave song he definitely asks it for it differently i'm gonna say that <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that's i mean you get that like punch at the beginning and i was like 
Yeah. Oh, I'm in for a wild ride with this one. Yeah, that hard R punch. Yeah. I think it's said 13 times throughout the whole film, I think. Holy shit. Which doesn't sound like that much, but I felt every single one. (laughs) Put myself in the mindset that, yeah, in that time, they would have just used it like, hi, good morning, how you doing? Yeah. So I did understand it. And they were very smartly placed. They were not, it was not just thrown around willy-nilly. They, he knew how to use them. They were purposeful. I mean, they use all kind of other slurs as well. The main boss shows up at, and says another one, but yeah. So they start singing really cool. <laughs> Some get a kick from and then white guys are like, nah, 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 this is what we want. And tries to give their own example and doesn't work. Swing low. So the main boss shows up and wants his hand cart taking over to his other side and he wants these two swell guys to do so. Again, he did not use that word. Nope. So as they're over there, they're singing again and they fall into quicksand. Oh. They pull the hand cart out and leave them guys in there. Because <laughs> it's cheaper to replace them. But then our homie is stepping on the rail so they get out and he is able to sneak behind the main asshole and le da un vergaso hits and knocks his ass out with a <laughs> shovel. We cut to an attorney where his head is all bandaged up and the attorney is trying to figure out this railroad that goes through the land and he wants to mess with this land. Taking a peek outside where hangings are occurring. <laughs> I don't know. That guy was weird. Yeah, that, that change of tone was... Because it went like medieval all of a sudden. It was like... See <laughs> you so while he's groping a statue, he figures a plan to try to get rid of the people of Rockridge, which is the place we're tying. I had to watch that part twice. I was like, what the f*** is he doing? So they come up with a plan to rape and pillage the little town. And our black guy that got captured with, with the shovel is actually scheduled for the hanging on Monday. And we figure out this while homie is getting ready to hang a horse. <laughs> so stupid. It's so dumb, but it's perfect, man. It's so dumb. You're not expecting it. No. So we cut to Rock Ridge with its own little team song, giving us the lowdown of that town. There's a bunch of cows in the bar. Then all of a sudden, the cowboys show up and start causing trouble. The stunts in this section is pretty wild. They're like dragging fools across. I love them when they're holding up the old lady and punching the shit out of her stomach. (laughs) So after they create havoc on the little town, they cut to the church or council. I'm guessing it's the council. <laughs> and the drunken guy is mumbling. <laughs> They're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what he said. In my head, it was like, the, the time of size, they actually need a new sheriff. So they go to the governor, Mel, who's chatting with the mija, and he's all birolo. <laughs> oh. He's messing with his secretary's titties and everything. Man. She was fine. Yeah. And next to him is a shady attorney that gets him to sign these goofy ass bills. And then the Miha reads the SOS from the town. The governor needs to send a sheriff. So the attorney picks the worst one he can find since it's in his best interest that the town falls. And as they're about to hang Bart, the attorney figures that he can send him and appoint him as the sheriff because he's going to offend people because he's black. So Bart is our main protagonist. So the governor meets the new sheriff, even though it takes him some convincing to do so. But they said that he's going to go down in history. So he figures, you know, he has to zip up his pants to figure out what the hell he's going to do. Small things. You do not expect them, but they hit hard. I was very, very surprised when you're going to be the first progressive mayor. It's going to be look like this. I was like, even in the 70s, they're, they're using this just as a goof. Well, because where the where the movie's taking place, that action is so wild. And yes. because the theme of race and bigotry and all that is a, such a heavy theme throughout the whole film, it's used in a brilliant way. Mm-hmm. So we got our sheriff in a snazzy new Gucci saddle. <laughs> and the town's getting ready to receive their brand new spanking sheriff <laughs> and the celebration stops when they see and find out that he's black <laughs> so everyone shook excuse me while i whip this out <laughs> the lady fainting yeah that i think that audio i've heard it since forever never knew where it came from mm-hmm. until i saw this and it just dawned on me everything gets so 
hostile all of a sudden. So the way he decides to get out of it is that he hells himself hostage. Genius. Like <laughs> so stupid. But but again, so simple. And it was just so brilliant and so funny. I was like believing it myself. I became a moron as well. I was like, uh, okay. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing the whole thing by himself. Like he was playing it real. I was part of the doofus is just looking at it like, oh, God, he's, he's stuck up. Oh, Lordy Lord, he's desperate. Do what he say. Do what he say. So the council go, heads back and it's you read behind the board and it's all a bunch of Johnsons. <laughs> <laughs> they want him to be removed. And we cut to Gene Wilder, who was waking up from a drunken nap in his cell. And he used to be called the Waco Kid, and he had the fastest hands in the world. And he proves it to him by taking a chess piece off the board. Bart is using the black pieces, and Jim is using the white ones. This is a subtlety. I never, I didn't notice that. So, he used to be that, but he got shot in the ass by a kid and fell into depression. <laughs> so, that's why he's not doing that anymore. <laughs> we also get Bart's story where his family was part of a wagon train, but all the way in the back, and they got ambushed where the chief walks up to him and starts speaking to him but the chief is played by mel brooks so what he's actually speaking there is yiddish i thought it was just mumbling he's making fun of the fact that he's an old white jewish guy playing a chief because that's what they were doing back in the day they would cast these old white jewish guys to play chiefs in movies Mm -hmm. so even that even that that can be looked as offensive as today has a purpose and a meaning he was very meta with his humor. Then we cut to the cowboys farting up a storm because they're eating beans. Oh, As Mexicans, we relate my chain with that. Yeah, that spoke to my soul. But this goes to like how Mel thinks because he's like, he used to, he watches cowboy movies and in all of them, they're eating beans. He's like, how are they not farting? So that's how he came up with the scene of all the cowboys ripping ass. So actually, the ripping ass scene turned out to be very revolutionary because up up until this point in cinema, there had not been any s- fart sound effects in any movie before. So he paved way? Yes, with a fart sound effect. So even if you go back and listen to it, he turns it up, like exaggeratedly, because he's expecting people to laugh. So they, he wants people to still hear the fart after the laughter starts. No wonder I thought my headphones had something because it... it I found it kind of weird that that was too loud. Because, I mean, the whole camp is ripping ass, but (laughs) (laughs) he's a revolutionary with the bailos, man. (laughs) Fart jokes never getting old. If you don't find farts funny, we can't be friends. I'm sorry. So Taggart decides to send Mongo to go kill the sheriff. Now. Mongo is played by Alex Karras, who was a defensive lineman for the Detroit Lions from 1958 to 1962 and no 64 wonder. to 70. So, yeah, he was a big dude. And he's like the beast that's chained up in the little camp. He's all chained up. And they're just chilling, puff, puff, passing. And he decides to go out and try to win people over. <laughs> that's when the old lady. And isn't it a lovely morning? Up yours. Right after that, Jim calls them morons, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Morons. And you can actually see a very genuine smile by Mr. Little, you know? Because he it was real. He wasn't expecting Wilder to say that. But I liked how they label the people with the racial thoughts and the prejudice and all this stuff as morons and dumb and stupid. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah, you let them say the offensive thing. But they're dum-dums. Exactly. You make fun of the people who agree and think that's kind of stuff. That's the true point of the movie. But I feel like that's the main reason why it can't be made today. Because people are just too eager to find shit to be offended by. And they look past the message. They would just stick to the word. And the movie is making a point that because who of who it's coming from. It's like they're morons. I saw two smart people. Two people that use critical. I wouldn't say critical thinking. They just thought they were people. Yeah. In 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 a in a, in a bucket of shit. And the only ones that knew how to think properly are the ones that are supposed to be us. Yeah, the heroes. Exactly. So I think that's why they were able to get away with it with the race kind of comedy because 
the ones that are being racist are labeled the morons, you know, <laughs> and they act like it throughout the whole movie. There's this thing with Wilder that I really loved. To me, I, th I thought it was subtle because there is something inside him. And he's throughout the movie, I think you see him battling with something. Mm. He has like an inner demon he's trying to fight off. He's chipper, but behind that chipperness, you see that he's dark. You see a shadow behind his eyes that starts like lifting as the movie goes on. And he, as he's speaking and exchanging ideas with Bart. But the darkness is getting shot in the ass by a kid. <laughs> so stupid. I know. <laughs> it is super stupid. And and and, and I, I don't know why I felt like it was something else. Yeah, no, it's not that deep. So here comes Mongo to the town with a bull with a yes and a no on its ass. How, what? How, why? Oh, it was a thing that ha that old buses have to let you know on what side of the bus the kids are going to get off. Like school buses. Oh, uh, a pendejo. Yeah. So the bull had it for just for a weird random reason. I like the Mexican too. Ay, Dios mío, Santa Maria. <laughs> <laughs> Mongo. Santa Maria. <laughs> Uh, that was great but then he parks his bull at the bar and one of the greatest moments in cinema history happens bro hey you can't park that animal over there it's illegal i have to put it up there this is the part that i mentioned that i told you back in the day that i saw and i remember watching that dying laughing and then 20 years later, probably a couple years ago, this movie was on TV and it happened again and I died la laughing. It's Mongo punching a f horse man. To me, one of the best movie scenes in history is the ride of the Rohirrim and the Lord of the Rings. No! This is right beside it. Man, I just can't, I can't not laugh after seeing this, you know? Because I remember, it, it takes me back to the first time I saw it. My brother and I were dying laughing because we just walk into the room and you see Mongo walk up to the horse and punch the f*** out of We didn't know. We didn't have no contest. We had nothing. We just started dying laughing. And I saw that again and it took me back to that point without any context. And it's like, it's, oh my God, top five moments in cinema to me. That's just the kind of goofus I am. Plus, I start to think, how do they do it with the horse? How does the horse know? had a clock like did he actually punch the horse because he falls perfectly it's perfect yeah though i think the horse's mvp wait neta fuera de cura because the horse he played ball bien cabrón because i don't maybe the writer's tugging on his on his i don't know i had to rewatch i saw it five times when i watched the movie i had to keep rewinding because i can't i can't get past it but i might have to like actually study the thing because i want to see if he's punching the horse or if the writer's maybe tugging on him so the horse knows how to fall they teach him how to like move his uh, his head and fall that way i don't know it's brilliant it's one of my favorite scenes stunts of any movie of all time it's brilliant monko punching a <laughs> horse so quickly the town folks change their tune because they want their new sheriff to take care of mongo who's crushing the whole bar behind a piano oh simon <laughs> he decides to give him a candy gram a la looney tunes and it explodes and he takes care of mongo so back to the bad guys, they devise another plan, but this fool lost his froggy when he's taking a bathy. <laughs> Aww. So cut the Mongo that's all chained up and knocked out, and an old lady comes in sneakily to give him an apple pie to thank him for dealing with Mongo, so the people are kind of now turning. Of course, you'll have the good taste not to mention that I spoke to you. Of course. Go back to the attorney, and they decide to send Lily Von Stoop. So she comes to town to seduce the sheriff. Mm. She starts with her performance of I'm Tired. <laughs> it's funny that she's terrible. <laughs> she's just like pure sex appeal, like no talent. After her performance, she invites the sheriff to her dressing room. And I guess she shuts the lights off and they bang. So because of that, she's tasted some dark meat and she's thirsty now. So leave that woman wanting more? She was thirsty way. Shit way. Not even the Huaktu girl, no mommy. Is it uh, true what they say about the way you people are gifted? Huaktu and spit on that thing, you get me? So the next day he gets to work and he finds a note demanding for Mongo's release. So they release Mongo, but Mongo don't want to go because Bart bested him, so now he earns his respect. 
Mm -hmm. And he starts talking about choo choos. <laughs> Got to do with where choo choo go. So the sheriff starts to figure out something what has to do with the railroad. So he goes back where he finds his compass. Again, not the proper word, but that's the one I'm using. And he's talking to them, and the cowboys show up. And Tiger's like, "All right, to make me happy, somebody sh somebody better shoot this Bart guy down." But the kid steps in and shoots all the guns off. The attorney tied up the Mija, who's flip flopped and now is on the sheriff's side because of that. Fuck to it. <laughs> Juicy black. <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but maybe. So they get another plan going to bring a whole army to take them down. Oh, the army, we no te pases de verga, we. So the town starts packing up, but the sheriff asks for 24 hours to save the town. And they say no, but he's like, You do it for Randolph Scott. Randolph Scott. Who the f is Randolph Scott? <laughs> so he was an actor from back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> so then we cut to the giant line of people who are applying for the war. Once he gets up to the line, this guy gets shot for chewing gum. <laughs> they lure some KKK guys over here. Hey, boys. Look what I got here. Hey, where are the white women at? That is such a Richard Pryor right? line. I can hear him saying that. I can hear him saying that. It's because the way he delivers it, too. Hey, look what I got. Hey, where are the white women at? So as they're dressed up as KKK members, the sheriff gets caught because he decides to take his hand out of the robe, and everybody starts chasing them. He decides to go rally the slaves back to help out Rockridge, and his plan is to build up a replica for, of the little town. The workers are willing to do it for a little bit of land, and they agree to, but... We'll give some land, but we don't want the Irish. <laughs> and all the bad guys in the army head out did you notice the biker guys <laughs> yep I, that's when it started to get like really crazy yeah so they figure out that there's actually people missing from the fake town so the sheriff the kid and mongo decide to go stall them and they build a toll booth so the bad guys eventually get to the fake town and they try to blow it up but it fails so jim decides to take a shot at the dynamite and everything starts blowing up the town folk charge at them to start wiping out and a gigantic brawl starts Mongo flipping horses again. <laughs> it's an all out brawl. Ladies are punching dudes through windows. Dudes are punching ladies. Then you got a shot of the studio and it starts because it starts to pull out and we cut to somebody filming a musical. Oh, some no slurs are said there, but the brawl spills over over there and the homos join the fight as well. I like Mongo carrying a fool just gingerly around. <laughs> <laughs> o cuando se meten un vaquero y un, y un, y un dancer y lo salen así como todos de shovel. Sí, so much shit happens right there. But then the brawl spills over to the studio cafeteria. They're giving a oh tour. Oh, my God. The bad guy's walking around and he figures, okay, I'm going to pie myself because there's a food fight going on. And he does so and he runs away from the studio. Like, he's not the, the, the character. He's not the actor now. <laughs> he might have because it's like super meta because he's like, what's going on? So the sheriff decides to chase him down to the premiere of the movie where there's cows in the lobbies now. The attorney sits down and is watching the movie where the sheriff shows up to the movie. <laughs> they run outside and he gets shot in the wheels. We, we head back to the little town where the sheriff decides to leave to nowhere special. And Jim joins him. They ride off to the sunset to a car <laughs> where, the, <laughs> where the car takes him home. And the movie ends. Man, this was such a ride. It was, it's fantastic. If you have not seen it, it's a 100% recommendation. But this movie was actually written first by Andrew Bergman. But it wasn't totally the same. But like the main story beats are there. And it was titled Tex X. Kind of playing with the Malcolm X thing and giving homage there, right? Mm -hmm. It was still about a black sheriff and all that other stuff. And it was actually going to be starring... James Earl Jones. Oh, my God. And actor Alan Arkin was going to direct it. Oh, shit. I know that name. Yeah. But for some reason, it fell through and the script fell to Mel Brooks and he loved it. So he ended up buying the rights to it. And so he obviously wanted to add his twist to it. So he hired a bunch of writers to rewrite it, including Bergman and Richard Pryor. So other titles for the movie were going to be Tex X, Black Burt. And Purple Sage. None of them sounds right. Tex X was okay. Black Bird is too. Uh, and Purple Sage sounds, I don't know. Like so, so, Now it sounds like some kind of new marijuana. Sounds very weird. While Mel was in the shower, he came up with Blazing Saddles. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't this doesn't specify what exactly happened. Ooh, but so yeah, random. It's just a shower thought. Pryor was supposed to star in the film. But at the time, he was seen as a little bit unreliable. 
I guess. Oh. So he left the project not before contributing. That's why he's credited in the movie. He actually came up with the character Mongo. Mongo only pawn in game of life. Oh, con razón, because I never, I, I was looking for the guy. No, he's it's he's like a producer writer role, and I, like I said, I bet you he came up with the white woman line as well. He had to, he had to. Yeah. So while Mel Brooks was working on Saddles, he was also working on Young Frankenstein, which we were probably going to do that for the list as well. I don't know if you've seen yeah, that. I want to watch that. Yeah, I want to watch it. I w- really want to watch it. I watched it a while ago, but now my perspective has changed about movies and Mel Brooks, so I want to check that one out. If you guys would like that, let us know that in the comments. But while he was doing this, he was doing Young Frankenstein. And he showed the script for Blazing Saddles to Wilder. And he actually wanted Wilder to be a different character. But Wilder wanted him to be the kid. But Brooks wanted the kid to be like an older guy. Mm. But eventually Wilder convinced him. Mel Brooks actually asked John Wayne to star in the movie. After he showed them the script, Wayne said that he loved it, but he couldn't because of his reputation. He didn't have the balls to go to a crazy comedy like that at the time. Mm Mm-hmm. It's just so crazy that even the executives didn't want to put the movie out. They were kind of scared. It's spicy even for its time. I didn't know that it, there was actually a TV series spinoff with the name Black Bart, which is one of the ones that we're thinking about. It didn't get past the first episode. Oh, man. Mainly because it's more similar to the Tex X script, right? Mm-hmm. And it featured different people. So the main people that you like from the movie are not there. Yeah, they might have used like good stars for the time, but it's not the same. You can't just swap the script and the actors, and which is a huge reason why you love the project in the first place and be like, here, like this too. It doesn't really work. I do kind of feel like a little bit of regret not watching it sooner, but I am thankful that I watched it with my 32-year-old ass because I, I, I understood a bunch of stuff that it would have just flown right past me yeah if i watched it as a, as a cheering yeah so i i gotta say this is a must watch for anyone like comedies watch it you like kind of like not thoughtful but you want to think about the comedy like smart comedy watch it you want stupid comedy you got it all it's a classic man it's it's pretty timeless because it's been you know 50 years now and i laughed like i'm pretty sure a lot of people laughed at the theater it's it's got so many gags that you something is gonna tickle you i liked it so much i watched it twice the same night <laughs> yeah, i see the cabron it's good it's good can you make it today no i don't i don't have trust in the audience to be smart enough to get it that's the problem because now we're in a love to be offended culture and don't really take context into satire anymore and this movie's just unapologetically what it is but there's so much behind the meaning of what they're doing because of what they're doing but i just feel i don't trust people to to get it you know no, yeah, and exactly. And add to that that people are very lazy. They just take everything at face value. So they don't like to delve deeper or dig deeper for a, a little a little bit more meaning, a little bit more context because they give you the context, but also you have to look for it in in the subtleties and the in 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 the things that the actors do. And and a lot of people nowadays are just not capable of looking past the initial or or like the blatant thing. Because there's this movie has layers upon layers of stupidity, and I love it. They're gonna clip the bad words and upload that, and that, and that's oh, this movie's offensive. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Comedy is made to push boundaries. If you can't laugh at something, it's because you have a problem with yourself. Something that you don't like is some, or if you don't like something, is because there's something inside you that you don't like that keeps you from liking that thing, or not even liking, just acknowledging the reality of the thing that was made. 50 years ago yeah but we grew up with i'm perfect though i can't be the problem i can be whatever i want to be so i'm not the problem everybody's saying i'm not the problem so it, no one's gonna self-reflect to even get to the point where we understand jokes it's jokes right yeah we lack own well people lack ownership because i felt like the last thing that really pushed boundaries was tropic thunder right now with homeboy doing blackface that's like the <gasps> right but even that has its purpose Wait, that was amazing. I want to get back to that type of comedy, pushing boundaries. Because now comedy is like a group of friends saying a bunch of dick jokes. And they could be funny. They could be great, right? But that's uh, niche. It's super, everything is super superficial now. But 
That's where I'm at today. That's why we're going to start looking at more Mel Brooks movies. We actually did Spaceballs last year, so make sure you watch that after this. Uh, also, let us know any and all th thoughts and comments you have of what we brought up today. Blazing Saddles, Mel Brooks, that type of comedy, anything at all. Let us know down in the comments. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to always and forever. You do you. Bye. Where are white women at? As a Mexican that works. <laughs> See you. <laughs> I want a green card. Can you clear that? <laughs>